Hi everyone, Johnny here. Today I'm looking at the Jamie Malarkey versus Michael Johnson fight. Part of the reasons why I wanted to look at this particular fight is because when I study fights, I always like to look at similar situations playing out and how each fighter makes changes, what these situations then set up later in the fight. So in this battle, when these two fighters came together, it was an open stance battle. So when I say an open stance battle, what that means is one fighter was in orthodox and the other fighter was in southpaw. So Jamie Malarkey stood in the orthodox stance and Michael Johnson in the southpaw stance. And one of the things that Jamie Malarkey went to work on straight away was using the lead low round. And why I thought this was an interesting battleground is because straight away my initial thoughts were he's trying to push Michael Johnson to his right. So Malarkey's right, also known as the open side. So the open side between both stances. And by doing that, what he was trying to set up was I thought it was gonna be a head kick and I was waiting for the head kick to happen. And lo and behold, you know, not too long after in the first round, he did throw that head kick as Michael Johnson was pushing towards the open side in that particular exchange. When you watch this fight through its entirety, what you'll actually notice is just how many times that actual kick was thrown. And I think in the USC stats, it was saying that 21% of the attacks were to the legs. And I think when I went back and actually clipped up and counted how many of those lead low attacks he threw, there was 20 of those lead low kicks thrown in that style of pushing off from the rear leg to load that lead leg and kick the lead leg of Michael Johnson and exit out the closed side of the open stances. Part of why that is an interesting battle is because a lot of the reasons why people want to take the outside foot position in that open stance battle is because then for the fighter on the inside to throw their power hand, they might actually be in a position where their legs are crossed up. Some examples of this to coincide with that. In certain particular exchanges when Jamie is attacking into that close side, as Michael Johnson is trying to counter with a, a hook cross or a jab cross, you'll see that his legs are actually in alignment. And as a result of that, as he throws the rear hand, it doesn't have the reach to actually counter effectively. So that's one of the advantages of taking the outside foot position. Now that doesn't mean that that always wins. There are plenty of situations and other fights where I've studied where fighters have been countered from the inside foot position. And usually that's a distance thing. So where somebody may land is because if you take that outside foot position, you've got more distance to cover. So a short check hook or a lead hand attack can get through. The combination that actually scored the knockdown for Michael Johnson in the first came off that battle. Basically the distance for him to land, he adjusted his foot positioning. He might have even actually adjusted backwards and taken the outside foot position, but that allowed him to then have his feet so that he wasn't squared up and caught Jamie out of position to land the rear cross accordingly. One of the best things about having fights in the Epic Center or when there's not as much of a crowd is that you can actually hear what the corner is saying and I did pick up on Jamie's corner actually calling jab right high jab right high jab right high jab right high so basically wanting him to throw the lead hand jab and then following up with that rear right roundhouse I think that was actually a, a key part of the game plan or something that they had identified as part of the setup moving into it you know I was a little bit surprised at how much Michael Johnson did move into the open side usually in that open stance battle a lot of the times they will fight for that outside foot position moving into the open side means that you're going to take the inside position instead and it's not a losing strategy either you know I don't really subscribe to the power side versus the weak side sort of battle I think it's more you know the open versus the close side and if you look at my Alexander Volkanovsky film study with Brian Ortega you'll actually see how Volkanovsky moves into the open side or the power side so to speak to square up his opponent and use that to his advantage so you know feel free to check that out and I am curious what everybody thinks of the judging I know that a few people would say that it's a controversial decision I won't talk about it in this actual film study here but I will actually Actually put my thoughts in the description below so if you are interested to read what my thoughts are they'll be in the description below and please feel free to comment and share with me what you thought of the fight and what you thought of the judging now the next thing that I wanted to talk about was the adjustments that were made I think going into the third round we didn't really get to hear the full briefing from Henry Hooft in the corner as to what he was telling Michael Johnson but it was something along the lines of hey your feet are too flat but no flat feet uh -huh. right he counters yeah. every time he's that head. So you're getting caught in those positions because you're not moving out of the way. You're not adjusting your position. There was a point in the fight where Malaki actually threw the rear body kick as opposed to the rear head kick. And I think that was when Michael Johnson realized that if I keep moving into the open side, I'm going to take more damage from these shots because I'm moving into the power of the attack. As such, in the third round, there were some great adjustments by Michael Johnson to actually then start moving towards the close side. So trying to win that foot position battle and then reverse the tide on Malaki. As a result of that, we actually saw Michael Johnson have great success with the jab in the third round. Now that's not to take away, you know, they both had success throughout the fight. It was a great fight. And if you haven't obviously watched it, you know, please make sure you go and check it out. And I hope you've liked this film study. If you have enjoyed it, please like, follow or subscribe. Check out my other content. Thanks for watching.